What's up, Miles? How we doing? Good, how are you? Doing good. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. We'll start with Jacques. Hey, Miles. Um, been a long time since we talked to you, like Brandon said. When you got hit at Missouri that day, you ran right back into the huddle and you played the whole game. Um, you know, it's hard to believe that you wouldn't play again after that. How, how did, was that adrenaline that led you through that, that game that day? And uh, I mean, just take me through your thoughts of, you know, that hit and Right. Yeah, it was actually uh, it was right after that hit on the sidelines. It was the touchdown pass to uh, to Terrence um, right on the goal line, and then the guy the defense lineman landed on me from the back, and I just kind of felt everything just tear apart at that point. Um, but I mean that was the second or third series of the game, so we had a lot more ball to play, and I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna give up on those guys, um, you know and. Yeah, adrenaline did have a lot to do with it, but you know, also the fight within myself had a lot to do with it as well. So, you know, we finished as strong as we possibly could, um, and then you know, we I went and got some medical attention after that. Yeah, I guess how much can you kind of walk us through? I mean, I know there was a debate over whether there would be surgery or not, and just what these last few months of recovering have been like. Yeah, it's been crazy. Uh, it was the probably the strangest injury that I have had. Um, I've saw a lot of doctors. Uh, we sent the MRI to NFL teams, to professional baseball teams, um, to professional golf coaches, anything, tennis, anything with like the torquing of the lower abdomen, um, just to see if they had any advice. And no one had ever seen an injury like this in this exact spot that I had. it. Um, and so the doctor I went and met with here in Baton Rouge uh, pretty much told me that we, I had two options. I could either let my body heal it on its own and take it literally a day at a time. Um, and I know that's very cliche for life, but it was literally a day at a time to see if my body would heal it on its own. And if not, he said we could do surgery, but I personally have never done surgery on this. Um, he said, so we'd be naming the surgery after you if you wanted to. And I, I didn't really feel that comfortable with that. Um, so I was gonna you know, give my body healing it on its own the time. And obviously, if worse comes to worse, then I would have gone with the surgical route. But uh, it was just, it, it needed time. And it was very frustrating because it was a very, very, very slow healing process. Um, and it was literally a week at a time. And I would, I would, I would heal increments at like 5% at a time, you know, and, and I, I was down at zero. So I would, you know, 5, 10, 15, and then I'd be able to pick up a ball and I'd be able to just flick my wrist and throw a ball. And then, you know, so it was just, it was, it was a very difficult process. Um, but I feel 100% now. I've been back in the weight room since we got back in January. Uh, I feel 100%. I feel strong. I feel healthy. Um, you know, and I'm 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 ready to go. Uh, <clears throat> I have a couple questions. I guess to the extent you're comfortable, tell us what happened. Yeah. So I mean, it was it, like I said, it was on that hit uh, right after I got hit on the sidelines. It was actually on the pass to Terrence, uh, the touchdown throw. And uh, I was rolling out to my right, and I threw the pass, and the defensive lineman just tackled me from the from from the back. And I remember my right knee got stuck in the turf, and so that was the first thing that hit. And then his body weight just came on from behind me, and just kind of stretched my abdomen. Um, like half my body was going towards the ground, and the other half was getting hit from the back. Um, and it kind of just ripped, you know, those muscles in my in my lower abdomen. Um, obviously, at the time, I didn't know that, but I I could feel something was wrong. Um, and then I, later with MRIs, we came to find out that I had a few torn muscles and ligaments. Okay. And how, what is your concern for, you know, causing the injury again? Yeah, I mean, that was one of my biggest concerns, uh, ask, you know, <clears throat> going through the recovery process with Doc. It was just, you know, what, what are all the options? And if this, like, what are the chances of this happening again? And pretty much he, what he had said is, you know, once this muscle scars down on its own, um, you know, it's pretty much it's re, it's reattached itself, um, and then I just have to continually build and, and grow that muscle. Um, I mean, injuries happen in football, you know, and, and I can't play scared. And you know, if a freak thing happens and that same spot gets injured again, then then it it's gonna it, it was meant to be to get injured again, you know. But I, I just can't let that affect my play and, and be worried about re-injuring that spot because I, I feel I've done a really good job and our training staff has done an amazing job helping me rehab and recover and get get back to where I am today. 
I wanted to ask you about the quarterback battle. As a guy that you know, has just as good a shot to win it as it does to lose it, what do you want out of the coaches um, and, and how they handle it and, and how you guys go about competing for that position? Yeah, I mean, this spring I'm really worried on, uh, focused on getting myself better. And, you know, it's been a long time since I've been out with the team and uh, getting, you know, getting to gel with my guys again. It, it felt really good to be out there with a helmet on and a football on Tuesday. Um, and, I, you know, there's a, there's a few things that I want to uh, perfect and critique on myself. And so I think spring is a perfect time to do that since we're not having to worry about, uh, you know, competing against an opponent every week. And that's my main focus this spring. Hey, Miles, this is Glenn West. I uh, hope you're doing well, man. Um, you know, just kind of take us back to, I guess, maybe when you first started to feel like yourself again. And then also, you know, Cobble just mentioned the quarterback battle. I mean, just what is the development you've seen maybe from some of the other guys that are going for that spot? And just, you know, how, how, is this, you know, as strong a quarterback room as you think you've ever been a part of or that's ever been at LSU? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I felt myself probably uh, late December, early January, right after the Ole Miss game when we had those few weeks off. And uh, I had talked to Doc and our training staff, and we said we were just going to take a few weeks off from rehab and just let, it, let the body just heal, its own, heal and see if that, you know, because we were doing rehab every day. So it was kind of like sometimes I would feel like I would aggravate it a little bit, but we were just going to say hold off on it for three weeks and we'll make a final decision when we come back. So I think when we came back in January, uh, right to start the spring semester, uh, you know, I, I felt I felt good, and I started working out, and nothing gave me any issues, um, and so that's when I continued to to do what I was doing, and yeah, I mean, we have a very strong quarterback room. We have a lot of a lot of talented guys in there, um, and I'm excited to go out there and compete with them every day and make each other better. Um, but yeah, this is you would never have thought that LSU would have the, as strong as a quarterback room as we as we have now. Hey, Miles Garland here. Um, we finally you waited your turn. You get to be quarterback last season. You you throw for over 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Can you can you sum up how do you think you did your first year? I mean, you, the numbers were there. There. What did you when you saw the film before your injury? How do you think you did in your your three starts? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot that I had to improve on, and I was taking it a week at a time. And I I am I personally uh, took a lot of things away from the Mississippi State game. Uh, it wasn't perfect by any means, and I improved a lot for the Vanderbilt game. Um, you know, in terms of pocket presence and stepping up in the pocket and then keeping my eyes downfield and things of that nature. And then I took things from the Mississippi State and Vanderbilt game and I applied that to the Missouri game. And so I, each week I was, you know, watching the film and, and, okay, like this is what I needed to correct. And then I would apply that to the next week. And so I thought that I was on the, the right track. Um, you know, I was, I, was, I was ascending and I was going upward um, in terms of learning from my mistakes from the previous week and, and, and making sure that those didn't happen the, the following week. Miles, um, how much are you seeing in this offense that you recognize, and what are what are the things uh, that you feel um, are? I mean, how much do you see the similarities working, with, and what's it like working with Jake Peets as a as a quarterbacks guy? Yeah, Coach Peets has uh, he's brought he's brought a new energy into the building, and I'm sure y'all heard that a lot uh, today. But you know, it's true. Um, he has a lot of energy to him. The the biggest thing he wanted to do before he started with the X's and O's is he wanted to build a relationship with all the players. And he's done a tremendous job in that. Um, you know, he calls me twice, three times a day just to check in. Uh, if I'm going home, he'll call me on the road. You know, and, and it's beyond football. You know, just see how life and, and parents and school and this and that, um, you know, which is very nice. I've never had that from uh, a quarterback coach or an offensive coordinator. So that was very nice, you know, for that in that aspect. Um, he's very smart. He brings a lot, a lot of, of knowledge to the table. Um, and the biggest thing that he wanted to do when he came from uh, – from Carolina was he wanted to he wanted to learn our offense rather than him bringing an offense and make us learn it again and so now you know he's he has made some additions um, that are going to help us tremendously but the similarity is very similar um, you know and we have a lot of returning guys and a lot of veterans that are obviously bought in um, and you know like like what it was said earlier they didn't come back just to just to come back, just to go through spring ball, spring ball and fourth quarter another year. You know, they came back to, to make a statement, to prove a point, and to get back where we all know we want to be. Yeah, Miles, uh, Ron Higgins, Tiger Wagner. Uh, I, I must say you set the standard for deciding how to, to trigger or not. If they, they name it after you, don't get one. It's a pretty good, a pretty good answer. Uh, a new spring, it seems like every spring you're dealing with some kind of tweak on offense. How many? Kind of tweaks or offenses have you gone through now? I'm trying to count them all. 
Shoo. Uh, I would say uh, right when I got here in 2017, I was with Matt Canada. Uh, 2018 was Coach Ensminger. Uh, 2019, Coach Brady came in. Uh, last year was back to Coach Ensminger. And this year it is uh, Coach Peets. So five, I guess you can say five different offenses. Some have been similar than others. Uh, I know 2017 Matt Canada was completely different than what we are doing now. Uh, but you know, it's part of college football, and uh, you know, I've been I've been uh, fortunate enough to work with some some really really good offensive coordinators. Um, but I'm really excited to have Coach Beats in the building with us. We have time for one more. We'll finish up with Shay. Uh, hey, Miles. Um, a lot, a couple of guys earlier said that you were not just a leader on the offense, but the team this off season. Uh, what, was, what was your mentality there going into the off season? Like you said, finally getting back out there. Yeah, it felt really good to be back with the team. Uh, you know, that was one of the hardest things for me to go through uh, during my injury was just not being able to, to suit up with those guys every day uh, during the week in practice and especially on game days because this is the stuff we're going to remember the most, you know. Um, but finally getting back in, into it in January. And, you know, I, I, I have the respect of everybody on this team and everybody in this building, and, you know, and everybody knows that. And, you know, I just I wanted to take my role and, and help get everybody in the team together. And, you know, you can lead if you're a senior or a junior or a freshman that just got here. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can lead by example. You can lead by words. And so I think the biggest thing is that, we, you know, we don't, only, we don't need to have 10 leaders on the team. You know, we can have all 100, 100 of us being leaders. And so I think that's been an important thing, was just trying to set the example on the field and also off the field for these younger guys to, to, to realize this is how we do it here at LSU. And like, like it's really not that hard to lead. You know, just do the right thing when no one's looking and, and make sure that your ac actions can back that up. Thanks, Miles. Thank you all. Uh, we're going to wrap up next with Keyshawn Booth.